hello. Welcome back to the Elise DeLucci Show. Welcome to my living room, episode 53. How are you doing? Hopefully you had a nice weekend. Fact of the day, public bathhouses. You know about these, you know? The first bathhouse in New York was opened in 1851. It was on Mott Street. And then the the, the first year-round bathhouse opened in 1901 on Rivington Street. And this was it was free, open year-round, and you could go... And you could take a bath. You know why they had bathhouses? They had bathhouses because the tenement apartments, they didn't have adequate bathrooms. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? You don't have a bathroom, to, uh, an adequate bathroom to take a bath, so you got to go to a bathhouse? I mean, God, God. We've got to be appreciative people. The tenement apartments in New York, by the way, if you've never been to the Tenement Museum downtown, you got to go. It's so fabulous. I might have mentioned it before. I think it's still closed. It was closed during the pandemic. But basically, you go... Um, I think it might be on Rivington Street too, but it's on the Lower East Side and you just go through an old tenement apartment, a few of them, and uh, they are set up how they used to be set up and the bathroom is in the kitchen and it's so super cool. I love it. The Tenement Museum, we have to check it out. But can you imagine the bathroom in the kitchen? And that's and that's if you were lucky because because there was other types of apartments that had the bathroom in the hallway, in the hallway. Yeah, mm-hmm. I used to go to a hairdresser in the Chelsea Hotel a long time ago, and uh, he, uh, Gerard Ducock, I think he's still around, but, and I think he still lives in the Chelsea Hotel, but his bathroom was in the hallway. That was how, that's just what, uh, that was kind of what the thing was. But I haven't actually been to one of the bathhouses in New York. I'm not talking about the, the, these old ones, but, you know, it's a thing now. It's a thing. You want to go for a schwitz, go to a bathhouse. Like, if you go to Brighton Beach, Coney Island, there's all these Russian bathhouses there. You could you could go, and it, people swear by them. I know Russian, older Russian men, they, they love the bathhouses. I used to date a Russian guy, and uh, I think that his father used to go. I, I, I feel like that, or maybe I'm making that up. No, I'm, defi- I'm definitely, I definitely think that's right. But um, I have friends that go. There's a, there's a bunch of places. There's, there's a place on Wall Street that has a, a bathhouse. There's, there's places on, um, I think it, there's one on East 10th Street downtown. And there's one in Koreatown, you know, in Midtown. But you know what? I don't know how I feel about that. I'm going to uh, go to a place. I'm going to have a schwitz, a steam. I'm going to sit around, you know, in my skivvies or in the buff, and I'm going to have somebody beat me with a bundle of oak leaves because that's what happens. I mean, I, I don't know if that's for me. <laughs> I guess it's no different than a spa. I'm assuming these bathhouses have massages and that kind of thing. I don't know. I really don't know. I do know that there's a, there's a place that my friends have gone um, I don't know if you've been here, called Spa Castle. Have you been there? It's in Queens. It's apparently some like giant spa in Queens. And you I, you could just have a huge day there. And I, I want to say maybe it's even an overnight. I don't know. But they have saunas and they have uh, massages and, and manicures and pedicures and, and, and schwitzes where you could go get beaten by the oak leaves. <laughs> but anyway. Apparently, it's supposed to be good for you. They, they, you know, that gets the toxins out of your body. The oak leaves, they contain a natural astringent, um, someone once told me. And then all the, the beating, you know, because they, they, they're hitting you with it. <laughs> you know, it, it increases your circulation, of course. <laughs> I don't know. You know, they have them around. Maybe I'll go one day. I can't imagine that, that any of them are open these days, you know, with, uh, with COVID. I mean, can you imagine sitting around in, 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 a, in a spa, in a steam room, in a bathhouse, in a mask? Oh, I couldn't think of anything worse. Anyway, I took my kids to the zoo this weekend, the Central Park Zoo. Oh, it was so cute. I wanted to take them to the Bronx Zoo, but, uh, you know, of course, you know, they had no tickets. You know, why would there be tickets available? I check on my phone, right? The day before, I'm like, oh, you girls, you want to go to the zoo? Big mistake right there. I should have, I should have, I should have not told them. You know, and they're like, yes, the zoo where they're flamingos. And I'm just like, definitely flamingos. <laughs> and I hype them all up for the Bronx Zoo. They've never been. And I, because I go on my phone, you know, I'm going on the phone. And I'm like, oh yeah, there's tickets. Great. And then I go home, you know, just like an hour later, sit down at my laptop, go to book the ticket. And of course... Wah, wah, sold out. I mean, how does it go so fast with the old bait and switch? But anyway, so we booked not for the Bronx Zoo, the Central Park Zoo, which I've been a million times. But uh, it was cute, you know. It was uh, it was very cute. They have the sea lions and little petting zoos. But, you know, it's funny, right, how how these things, that what they cost to get in. So 
they have the thing, the Wildlife Conservation Fund. You could join the Wildlife Conservation Fund. You could become a member. And I think membership is like, uh, I think it was like $200 or something for the year. You're, you're a member of all the zoos in New York, right? So you could join the fund, you become a member of the zoo, and uh, and then you go for free. Or you could buy tickets for the zoo. And, you know, one adult ticket to the zoo is like $30. And then the, the kids' tickets are like $25 each. You know, and if you're going to the Bronx, with any factor in parking, da 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 So it's like, why don't you just join the thing? Because it's, it's, it's really two trips to the zoo pays for the membership, right? But it's so funny. It made me think about... Um, so I joined, by the way. So I joined. So, but it made me think about uh, all these the, the, these rich the rich mothers in New York, like all these wealthy families. You know, they, they're members of all the things. It's hilarious. They'll be like, "Yo, yes, yes, the MoMA. We're a member of MoMA. Oh, the Whitney. Yes, we were at the members gala mm-hmm, last last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah." And I I literally. I will listen to this kind of conversation. I'll be like, what kind of sticks do you have up your giant asses? I can't stand it. But but it's funny because now I am one of these people that's members of things, but I'm not. I am not a member of any of these organizations so I can go to galas. I'm a member because I have a small apartment, no playground, no playroom, no backyard, and it's cheaper. <laughs> it's cheaper for me to become a member that you know and have somewhere to take my kids than 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 to like I don't know get them tickets on a one off to the zoo and then maybe go to a play place another day and have to pay an entry so so now I'm a member I'm a member of the met a member of the zoo so it's funny you know they send and they send these things you know to my house like to, for me to donate more it's like oh, I, I didn't donate enough I I paid two hundred dollars for a membership a year like like that that it, where I come from like people don't like become members of like the museum and the zoo like it's not it's, 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 I, I don't even I don't even think I told my mother but I told my mother she'd probably be like, what kind of snob are you yo you remember oh we have yes we're mother we're members of the Met now <laughs> no the only reason why we're members of the Met is because it's kind of near our house and then we could take the bus and we could go there and it's like a free day out for the kids kind of anyway I, but the zoo, it was cute. It was it was cute. They had all the indoor, you know, things open. The birds, you know, they stink. You got to go through the thing. And, and there's the penguins in there, uh, seagulls, whatever. I don't know, pigeons, puffins on display. And the, you know, <laughs> all those little tunnels that are inside the zoo that you would think would maybe be closed because of the pandemic were open. It was nice. And, you know, of course, no trip to the zoo is not, com- it's not, it's not complete unless you have some, like, raging New Yorker there, like, you know, doing some sort of spectacle. So there we are in the pigeon portion of the zoo. And there's a woman, and um, she had um, she had a thick New York accent, and she was like, oh, my God, the Tuffins. Look at the Tuffins. The Tuffins are here. Oh, I love Tuffins. They're so cute. They're the Tuffins. Look, 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 Gina, the Tuffins. And I'm just like, I think they're called Puffins. <laughs> So I look on the thing, and they're called puffins. It's like a small mini penguin or something. And then, and then the other girls like, they're not toughins. It's puffins. And I'm just like, all right, I've. I, but my membership uh, entertainment has been filled. We can go now, girls. Mommy's happy. So that was very fun. And you know, by the way, once you get into these places, you know they expect you to buy the food and all that stuff. I'm not. I'm, I'm buying none of that. You know, my daughter's like, "Mommy, why can't we go into the the cafeteria and get something? Mommy, why can't we go into the cafeteria and get something?" And I'm just like, you know why? Because mommy doesn't have money for that. That's why. Mommy has sandwiches, okay, that I made on three day old Italian bread that I heated up in the oven so the bread would be soft. And this is what you're having, okay? This is what we have. This is this is the only option. <laughs> So there we are, you know, sitting on the bench having our sandwiches and, you know, and they're like, but we don't want peanut butter and jelly, mother. (laughs) Too bad. Too bad. Tell your father to give us money. How about that? Tell him to give us money. And then, and then we'll go to the the zoo cafeteria for lunch, okay? Yeah. So when you got married, did your father walk you down the aisle? Did he walk you down the aisle? I'm assuming yes. I'm assuming if you got married and your father was alive, I'm assuming he walked you down the aisle. Unless, in my case, your father was not in your life while you got married, which was the case, not by my choice. And he did not walk you down the aisle. But you know what? Here's the thing. Let me tell you this, okay? I'm reading the the Times this weekend. And um, I'm in the vows section, you know, the the love section. and, um, And I'm like, there's a whole article on, you know, the fathers walking the bride down the aisle. And it was interesting because, you know, I didn't really think about that. Like, there's a lot of stuff about weddings, you know? It's like, it's like okay, brides are wearing 
wearing, uh, you know, non, not white dresses or, uh, you know, we're doing non diamond rings now and people are not wanting to get engaged. They're deciding with their significant other that, okay, yes, we will get married in a year and I don't want a traditional engagement, you know, so they're all, they're, everything's very modern, but I didn't really think about the father, uh, walking the bride down the aisle aspect of the traditional wedding. And it made me think as I'm reading this article, like, what about the mother? What about the mother? She worked just as hard raising you. What, she, she, you know, first of all, a lot of mothers, I mean, you know, they, they, they had a job. They contributed to the house. And even if they didn't have a job and the father was just the, it was just the, the sole provider, income provider. The mothers, they worked like dogs doing laundry, cooking. They, they, they kept a home. Why does the father get all the glory? Huh? Why? Why? And, and, and if we want to even think about, if we're going real back, if we want to go way, way back, old school, sort of way back, it's like the, a lot of these fathers, they weren't even home. They weren't even home. You know, dad leaves for j- the job. Dad leaves for his job early in the morning, comes home late at night. I know my father. My father used to leave for work at like 5 in the morning. And uh, he used to come home, you know, maybe at like 6.30, 7 at night, late. He was barely around. Then he fell asleep on the couch, like watching Western movies of the History Channel or something. I mean, he wasn't even around. And, I mean, again, my father wasn't wasn't in my life when I got married, which is a whole other topic for another day. But I am... Um, but I mean, like, you know, these, these dads are not around. And then they go, they walk the bride down the aisle. They walk their kid down the aisle. And it's like, as if, what about the mother? Huh? Huh? But this, this, you know, but I guess that this topic coming up or them talking about this idea of dads walking down the aisle, should they or should they not? It's fitting for this evolution of weddings, this trend that's going on, you know, with the non-white dresses and yada, yada. Weeknight weddings, another non-traditional thing. I mean, Meghan Markle walked herself down the aisle. But one girl, one girl that was interviewed in the, in the article was interesting. She said, she said she, she, she didn't want her father to walk her down the aisle. She didn't want her mother to walk her down the aisle. She said she wanted to walk with her fiancé down the aisle. And that's what she did. She said, we already had a life together. We wanted to walk into marriage together. They wanted to approach it together. And I, you know, I actually, I really like that. I, th- I do like that. I do. Another girl... Um, another girl that was in- interviewed for the article, she said that she, uh, you know, she engaged and she got married and she did not want her father walking her down the aisle. She tossed that tradition. She said she felt like that it had really deep roots in patriarchy and the, the notion that uh, a man, uh, sorry, a woman belongs to a man. She just found very archaic and she wanted to honor her independence. Now listen, I get that POV. I really do. And I'm and I and I like it to be honest. I really do like it. Like why why all of this why should your father be giving you away? What 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 are you what are you a cow? Like what are you a cow? Like no you work, you support yourself, like you give yourself away. Thank you, last time you checked. But but it's all like it, it's you know what drives me crazy about this kind of stuff. I agree with it. I really do. I agree with it. I don't know I never thought about it. Let, let me back up. When I was getting married Say I had the option for my mother or my father to walk me down, or or just my father, whatever. I don't know if I would think. I don't know if I want my dad to walk me down because of the patriarchy. Like I just wouldn't. I just didn't, and I wouldn't. And and these these people, they you know they're really thinking about it. I guess this is what what young engaged girls are thinking about or talking about with their fiancés. And but. And so I read the article and I was like, yeah, I agree with that. There should have, there's no one should be giving you away, you know, or like, yes, you live with your husband, you live with your boyfriend already and you're engaged and you want to walk into marriage together. I think that's amazing. That's great. I love it. But then when I get to the paragraph in the article where it talks, talking about the deep roots and patriarchy, I'm just like, I shut down. I'm just like, oh, please, 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 please. Um, I, it's, it, it, it's too much, but but my, my mother walked me down the aisle. And my mother was dressed as like a bride, okay, if you want to know. Okay, because, you know, please. It's like, uh, what was it? Is it like Debbie Reynolds and what's her daughter, you know? The mother, she wants to upstage the daughter. No, I'm kidding. I'm really kidding. That would be offensive to my mother. But my mother, you know, I got married and my mother's like, I must wear a champagne dress. She wears a champagne dress, a mermaid style, sequins all over it. Who knows who's the bride from far away? If you were slightly colorblind, if you were standing where the priest was standing, 
Okay, and I got married at St. Patrick's in Brooklyn, in Bay Ridge. If you if you were standing at at, at the uh, at, you know at where the priest is standing on the altar, and you saw two women walking in, okay, and you were slightly colorblind, you wouldn't know which one was the bride. Okay, that's how much my mother looked like the bride. She had diamonds on. She she borrowed from the jeweler. I can't. If I ever got married again, which I don't think I am, I'd be walking my own ass down the aisle. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> But I'm curious. I mean, you know, like whatever you guys did. I'm sure, I feel like, you know, our, if you're around my age, you know, our sort of generation, we're just, we. a lot of us went with the tradition. Like, okay, okay, well, your dad's going to walk us down the aisle. But but I think that if you are younger, like, you know, your girls, they're in their 20s or they get, they're engaged or whatever. I think they are more looking at this um, this whole thing differently. I do. I like it. But, you know, if you, if you want to if you don't want your dad to walk you down the aisle and you don't want your mom to walk you down the aisle, I mean, you know, and you come from a traditional family, you got to be prepared for, you know, God, everybody to think you're a heathen, at least in my family. If I told my mother I don't want you to walk you down the aisle, she'd be so offended. She would have been so offended. Wow, what's the matter? Why can't I? Did I not raise you? I mean, I would have I never heard the end of it. Anyway. Magic mushrooms. Another thing I read about magic mushrooms, and I didn't read the whole article. I, 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 I shut down. But it was about mushrooms and can they heal us. But it did remind me. When I, when I, saw, the, when I saw the headline, it reminded me. Of, um, it reminds me of a time. I lived in Italy when I was in college. And, I, uh, and, on, and, uh, and the school that I went to, they gave us off on Fridays because they wanted, they wanted to encourage the American students to travel, you know, to travel around Europe. So one weekend I went to Amsterdam with my, uh, my, one of my roommates, Kelly, and we went for Cannabis Cup, which is the International Weed Smoking Festival, you know, and I'm not, I wasn't even a weed smoker. I wasn't, I didn't smoke pot. I don't do drugs. I don't smoke pot. I don't like that shit. I didn't, I didn't like it then. I don't like it now. But anyway, so, but we go to Cannabis Cup, right? And uh, we're there, and I'm, I don't know, 19, and we're in this thing. It was in Amsterdam. It's called the Milky Way, and it's a big, that's it, Milk Were or something. I think that's it, how it's pronounced but in, in, in that country. But it was translated to the Milky Way, and the Milky Way was basically this giant convention center in, in the city in Amsterdam, and uh, they held cannabis, the Cannabis Cup, and that was, like I said, International Pot Smoking Festival, all types of um, booths all around, growers, people walking around with crowns of thorns made out of marijuana. You know, if you were into pot, this was the place to be, okay? And my roommate, I guess, was, I barely even remember. Because, you know, I'll tell you why I don't remember. But I, she, I, I don't even know how we got tickets. I think she's like, you want to go to this thing? And I was like, sure. So, so there we are in Amsterdam at Cannabis Cup. And I'm starving. And not because I smoked pot. I didn't smoke any pot. I just happened to be hungry. But I'm always hungry. Anytime I'm in a new situation or in a new environment, I'm hungry. So I'm hungry. And I say to Kelly, I say, Kelly, I say, I'm dying here. I'm so hungry. Like, let's leave this shit. Like, 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 I got to get something to eat. And she's like, don't worry. I have raisinets. Have some. She gives me a handful of raisinets. And I, you know, I look at them and it's dark in this big convention center and all these people bumping into us high as kites. And, you know. You're hearing all different languages. Everything was just crazy. So she hands me this handful of raisinets, and I, you know, knock them back. Of course, you know, one, two, pop them back into the back of my throat. I swear, in about 15 minutes, I was so high like a kite, and she then told me, she said, they weren't raisinets. They were mushrooms, magic mushrooms. I said, you drugged me? And she said, you were hungry. I thought it would be funny. I said, nothing about this is funny, Kelly. I spent the next six hours walking around Amsterdam tripping off my mind. Can you imagine someone just giving you mushrooms you never did? Let me tell you something, okay? I didn't even know what the hell was happening. I'm walking around Amsterdam, okay? I'm seeing, like, I'm seeing garage doors with graffiti on them. I'm seeing graffiti on the walls. The graffiti's jumping out at me. Literally, there was a lion graffiti on a garage door. I thought the lion was chasing me. I was so beyond. I couldn't even. Then we walked. We just walked the whole night. The whole night, we just walked through the night. She was blasted off her head. I was drugged. And, 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 and we're walking through Amsterdam. You know, we left the convention. We're walking through Amsterdam through the night. And then we get on the street. And, it's, um, and it was this kind of funny street. I remember it was like all these, on either side of the street, 
and there was all these storefront windows and there was like lots of things in the window with like these red lights, glowing red incandescent lights in the windows. And there was these like Barbie doll creatures standing in the windows, like in lingerie. And I didn't know, I thought, I was like, oh my God, like I'm in the real version of Candyland. What's going on? It was just like all these like people dressed in the windows, like and and music playing and little dinging and, and people spinning in windows and red lights and pink and lollipops. I was going insane. And so I take out my camera. I start taking pictures. I'm like, wow, i got to document this. You know, I had a Kodak disposable. Well, next thing I know, one of these like Barbie dolls like jumps through the window, gets my camera, throws it. Apparently, I was in the red light district in Amsterdam, and those were the hookers that were for sale in the windows, and you're not supposed to take pictures. Oh, God. It was the craziest experience of my life. But And, and, and by the way, note to self, never take something that somebody's giving you. But, but, but... That's what made me think of when I saw that article. And, uh, and you know, mushrooms, well, they, well, for me, they were a source of drugs. But my, uh, my friends, I have some friends that are taking mushrooms for medicinal purposes. When I, uh, I was at my ex-husband's house, him, him namely, when I was at my ex-husband's house, I don't know, maybe like eight months ago, and I went in his bathroom, and he had all of these bottles of mushrooms in them. The brand, it was Host Defense, if you want to look it up, Host Defense. He had all these bottles of mushrooms. I said, like, you know, like pill bottles. And I said, what the F? I said, what do you got, a side gig selling mushrooms? You making money on this shit? Yeah, I want in. And he's like, oh, my God, Elise. He's like, I am not selling mushrooms on the side. He's like... He's like, apparently mushrooms have a lot of medicinal properties and people are taking them as vitamins. I'm trying a new thing. And I was like, yawn. That reminds me of the time you take a bee pollen thinking, you know, you you superhero. But anyway, they apparently it's a thing. You know, they're good. Well, if you just eat mushrooms, I know they're good. Fat free, low calorie, cholesterol free, and they have vitamins and fibers and yada, yada, whatever. But, but this, this idea of mushrooms, um, in pill form, um, replacing sort of your multivitamin is a, is a, is a thing, is a thing. It's popular right now. Um, there's like this one guy and I don't remember his name, but he's the, he started that company host defense and that company that makes all the mushroom vitamins. And he believes in the power of mushrooms saying that they have lots of antioxidants and they could protect the body from, you know, radicals that cause like heart disease and cancer and all, you know, it's all of that sort of holistic medicinal stuff. But, but I thought it was interesting and it's, it's getting, you know, it's, it's, it's picking up some steam, this mushroom medicine. I am not going to ever take mushroom medicine as I had a terrible experience with mushrooms. The only mushrooms I'm consuming are portobello in hamburger form, which reminds me, I did go to Shake Shack over the weekend. If you're ever at Shake Shack, if you, you know, I don't know if you go or not, but if you're ever at Shake Shack, they make a veggie burger. It's a portobello mushroom burger. It's stuffed with cheese. Literally, it's a portobello mushroom. They like fry it on either side. It's like breaded and fried. When you bite into it, the cheese, it, it just it just spills out into your mouth. It's like an explosion of cheese. You know, you bite into a burger, it's nice and juicy. You bite into this, it's like juicy mushroom. You don't even know if it's a mushroom. You don't even know it's a mushroom. And then the cheese that oozes out. Oh, my God. Talk about delicious. That's the only mushroom I'm consuming. Thank you. So I was on the phone with my mother earlier, and, you know, I guess I don't know if, what the hell she's doing in her pajamas at 9 a.m. because she does work, but maybe she wasn't working today. And she's like, look what I'm wearing. And it was uh, a, night, <laughs> a nightgown I got her for Christmas a few years ago. There's this brand of nightgowns I like on Amazon called Shadow Line, and uh, they make these nylon nightgowns. Like, they have kind of 1950s-ish. And, um, and I bought her one because she's always was on a hunt for a nylon nightgown ever since I was born. She's like, but my whole life I heard, oh, my nylon nightgowns are in rags. They don't make them anymore. So I've, and I finally found them online. And I, and I wear them because they're so comfortable. So she's wearing the nylon nightgown. I got her just what I want to see. And then she says, Elise, she says, I found another good nightgown on Amazon. And I'm like, and my mom's not like a huge shopper. So I knew if she found it and she liked it and was buying it, it must be good. I said, what is it? She tells me, um, the brand is Shy uh, May. Shy May. The, and this is my product of the week. I didn't get this nightgown yet, by the way, but I am. I ordered it. I ordered it this morning after I got off with her. It's uh, Amazon's so good with returns. Like, I order everything and I just send it back if I don't like it. But, like, Shy May, the, the, you spell it S H Y M A Y. And it's um, 
So it's my mother's recommendation. Shy my women's sexy satin nightgown. It's long. I'm, please, she's telling me the description. And I'm like thinking to myself, really? Like, really, mom? I don't want to hear about your sexy satin nightgown. But it's nine, 19, nine, I wish. It was 1999 on Amazon, and it's made out of polyester and spandex. Usually I don't like polyester stuff because I like the cotton to let me breathe, but she said it's soft. Um, it's made with, you know, n- nice fabric, like a silky, stretchy fabric, but it also has a fab- a good fabric for sensitive skin, apparently, or at least that's what she said. But anyway, so I ordered it, and I wanted to tell you about it, the Shy May Women's Sexy Nightgown. It's long. I like long nightgowns. I have good legs, but I like long nightgowns. I just I feel like to be covered. It's a long nightgown, and I think it has a little bit of a slip. And, you know, it's like a, it's a tank, you know, like a spaghetti strap nightgown. And, you know, of course, this is exactly what I want to do. I want to take nightgown recommendations. I want to take boudoir wear recommendations from my mother. I, it's, exa- it's exactly my goal in life. I want to be dressed like my mother in the bedroom. <laughs> it's like that, that, that's hot. To, to the boyfriends, the boyfriends and husbands of the world. Oh, that's that's a that's a beautiful that's a beautiful piece of lingerie. That's a beautiful nightgown. You know, where'd you get it? Oh, my mother wears it. You know. <laughs> anyway, Shy May women's sexy satin nightgown, long slip sleeveless paragraph split chemise lingerie. You know, look like a lunatic description as always. So I'm gonna get it. I'll let you know how it is. I'm, I am very excited because I, you know, we've to, we talk about house clothes a lot on here. It's, very, it's a very, very important topic. Very important. Quote of the day. Helen Keller. When one door of happiness closes, another opens. But often we look so long at the closed door that we do not see the one that has been opened for us. Helen Keller. A good reminder to be present, people. My reminder for myself I really need that sometimes I'm always looking at the spilt milk the milk that spilled over I'm not even looking at I don't know the juice that just made itself appear in in the fridge anywho that's all for today's episode of the Elise DeLucci show thank you for listening please make sure you subscribe on spot uh, sorry uh, Spotify, Apple uh, Podcasts, and I'm going to be in Florida this upcoming week. So if you are there, I would love for you to come out. Um, I'm going to be in Naples. Oh, I'm blowing up. Somebody's calling me. Oh, God. I don't know who that is. Anyway, we'll just ignore that. I will talk to you soon. Bye.